Chester. Thank you. Um, welcome to Virgin Mega. So we just heard your, your next album and we're counting the, the days before its final release. And the first words that come to our minds is uh, emotion and moving and surprise too. Mm. So was it the main uh, goal when you, when you enter into the studio to produce this effect? Um, I can say that collectively there was a goal. Um, our goal was to uh, make a record that still had captured what it is we felt makes us unique and makes us who we are. Um, you know, we we wanted to be able to mix different styles of music, and we wanted to you know have a sound that's unmistakable, Lincoln Park. But we wanted to present it in a different way. We didn't want to write an album that sounded like Meteor or sounded like Hybrid Theory. Um, so we knew that we had a lot of work ahead of us and we knew that we had a challenge um, because it, because what we've been doing in the past has worked so well for us. Um, you know, there is a risk involved in changing that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we took so long in working on the record was to find to find in ourselves as songwriters the the right ways of, of doing that and in, in the right kind of music and the right style and the right confidence it takes to, to be able to accomplish that. Did you reinvent your songwriting process or your production process? Both. We, we, we did everything uh, 100% differently um, on this record than we have in the past. Uh, traditionally, it's taken us around a year um, I knew it took about 12 months to write Hybrid Theory. It took We started writing songs for Meteora 18 months before we released it, but it, I'd say collectively it took about the same amount of time, about 12 to 14 months to write that record. And uh, on both of those albums with Hybrid Theory, we, we wrote the music, got the music up to where we felt it was ready to record. There were some melodies that were in place, but uh, we were in the studio for two months. So first month we recorded all the instruments, second month we focused on melody and lyrics. We wrote all the lyrics and we wrote about probably 80, 80 to 90 percent of the melodies during that time and recorded the, everything. With uh, Meteora we spent three months in the studio, again about one month or so recording all the music, two months working on melodies and lyrics. Um, on this record, we spent 15 months in the studio. We wrote 150 songs, and Mike and I worked on vocals for about nine months. So um, it was a much different process. And, um, even the way we wrote, we, we, we split up into groups and we intentionally kept Mike and Brad from working together too much in the beginning because that's the that's how we've worked in the past is Mike and Brad have gotten together wrote some music then they would bring it to the other guys when they got comfortable enough to show everybody what they've been working on uh, this time around we all started working together in groups and then we trade hard drives and trade songs and split and then switch partners and work on new stuff and um, it was a really great experience and uh, you know everybody was involved 100% of the time um, and everybody contributed more on this record, I think, than, than they had in the past. The atmosphere is quite strange, because it sounds like, um, you know, the collaboration between King Crimson and Affix Twin mm -hmm. and U2. <laughs> so, what, was it uh, uh, one of your main influences when you, when you started to, to, to create these arrangements, this progressive experimental sound, even though the, the, the final result is true? down to the melody in your voice. Yeah, um, you know, I, I really do believe that we'll be, you know, we will be known as a progressive brand, a progressive band. I think we've been very progressive in our work in the past, um, and I think even more so people will recognize that on this record. But uh, it, it, there was a lot of experimenting. There's a lot of, you know, risk taking and um, going out and, and, and doing things that we hadn't done in the past. and. Um, you know that that being said, we got we did get to a point a couple times in the process where the songs we were driven towards because we 
early on made the decision not to write music that we thought we were supposed to write. You know, it didn't have to have Mike rapping in the verse. It didn't have to have me singing in the chorus. It didn't have to have a PRS running through a Marshall head. It didn't have to have one drum set up and and Rob knock it out in two days. You know, it, it each song needed its own attention, its own instruments, its own setup to make what that song could be potentially as good as it could be. You know. Um, and uh, and we, we you know we got to a point where we were listening to some of the tracks and you know for example like a track like you know hands held high that is a song that sounds almost like a church hymn it's got uh, you know a lot of it's got organs it's got um, a, a marching band drum beat and it's got Mike rapping on it and you know in the past I don't think that song would have as as great musically as it was I don't think it would have even gotten to the vocal aspect of it because we would have been like this is this can't go on a record you know we, we'd limited our, ourselves in that sense and on this record we just kind of said there's you know sky's the limit like if we like it we need to work on it even if at first glance it, it may not seem like a Linkin Park song um, the end result of Hands Held High is a very Linkin Park style song. It's it's as Linkin Park as anything else, but um, we really had to open ourselves and open our, our minds to be able to to be um, willing to work on something like that. You work with Rick Rubin. Yeah. Um, when you worked with uh, Johnny Cash, um, he told to Johnny Cash to go back to his roots and just to express himself deeply without anything else. Was it the kind of advice? Gave it to, yeah, to you. He, he 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 said right away like, um, you know, in order for you guys to be viewed as um, great songwriters and as uh, as a band that is unique and stands on stands out on its own, you have to be able to not fall into the trap of of making music that you think you're supposed to make. You can't, you can't, you know, if you, if, if you think, well, we have to stick to the formula that's worked for us in the past, it's not true. If you don't think that you can, you know, play banjo on a song, or, you know, or, you know, have Chester singing over an acoustic, uh, acoustic guitar, Those are those are things that don't make any sense. You, you write music that matters to you, and, and whatever it is, whatever you're inspired to write, that's what you need to work on. Whatever makes you feel something, that's what's important, because that's what music is here for. It's to make you feel something, and so we just went with it, and it and uh, it it was it was a very similar approach, I think, and I think he uses that approach probably with almost everyone. It's just like. Be true to yourself and be true to what you're doing, and you know, if the music's good, people will like it. Um, did you suffer uh, in the United the United States nowadays as an artist who want to express uh, himself? Did, I didn't understand the first part of that question. Um, sorry. Did you suffer uh, as an artist who want to express himself in the United States mm -hmm. nowadays? You know, it, it's interesting because I I've been talking to some people and. You know, these are guys that have been around for a while, and you know they they started getting into music in the '60s and um, '70s and stuff. And I've been hearing a lot from those guys that you know bands don't have anything to say <laughs> in a lot of music today. And uh, there are a few bands. You know, I don't want to generalize it too much, but there are there are some bands that are willing to go out on a limb and express themselves and say something that's That how they feel, and uh, you know, um, I think I think we're one of those bands, and I think with this record, uh, more than ever, you know, we've kind of stepped into some places that may, maybe we weren't as com as comfortable going into before. We're, we're fairly, you know, we're all young guys, and we're we just now, I think, can consider ourselves men and stuff. So. Um, Where we are today is definitely much different than where we were 10 years ago, and I think that um, we we're saying a lot of things that we feel need to be said on this record, and uh, there's some other bands out there that are doing similar things, but um, 
you know um, I think everyone in everyone in America I think kind of feels almost like uh, they've got something to say but they just don't know if they're allowed to or if they can you know what I mean yeah and this I think this next election is going to say a lot yeah <laughs> that wasn't why asking you yeah. these questions because I, I meet so so much artists who said that they can sometimes the they, they don't find words just to, to, to say what they are witnessing. Um, that's why I was asking you if you, it was a difficult process just to write songs about your... Yeah, it, it, your it is. It is. It's, um, well, I think it's important, for, for us, it's important to not tell you what to do. You know what I mean? Uh, and especially when you're touching on social socially um, driven lyrics or politically driven lyrics that you have to take, you know, you have to take the politics out. And that's uh, your own politics out. That's, that's the difficult part. Like, um, to not have an agenda, to just make an observation because you want to do the right thing or you want the right thing to be done. Um, that is, uh, that's, that's not an easy thing to do. Um, and there's a difference between, you know, being aware and, 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 f and forcing an opinion on somebody, you know, um, and it's, it, it's, uh, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of thoughtfulness to be able to do that. And I think, um, I think that, you know, Mike and I have, have accomplished that in, in some of the songs that we've written on this record, you know, like Hands Held High and No More Sorrow and The Little Things Give You Away. Uh, those are all statements on uh, some observations that we've been making and some statements that we feel we needed to, to make and on certain aspects of the world we live in today and uh, um, certainly uh, with the ha with hands held hot or uh, with the uh, little things give you away that was written after visiting New Orleans a year after Katrina hit and it was it was not good you know and you know, when we're when we when you grow up in a place that tells you, you know, what a wonder you live in the best place in the world, and you know, um, you're safe here, and like, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can always count on your government to be there for you, and you know, that's what you that's why you pay taxes, and that's why you you know, so many people sacrifice themselves for our military actions and stuff is to protect our freedom and our way of life, and then when something like that happens, and you're left out to Dry, you know, left out to die, basically. Um, it, it, it just seems, uh, it was really upsetting to me. Um, you kind of feel a little lied to. And so um, it was important for us to f talk about some of these things and do it in a way that really was just really about the feeling and kind of the observation rather than the politics involved. Do you still run with a, a kind of universal point of view? Well, we try to, with all of our lyrics, we try to write it in a way that everyone can relate to. Um, but, uh, you know, I think some things, you know, some things are, are more obvious than others. And it's not, uh, we, we leave things open to, for interpretation so you can apply them to your own life. Um, but the sentiment is obvious, I think. Any departing words for our French audience? Uh, I just would like to say that, to uh, our fans out here that we um, are so very thankful for their support and uh, we, we truly feel that France is uh, one place um, in the world where our fans appreciate um, all of the things that we do, all of our different styles and all of our um, uh, everything from hybrid theory to reanimation, um, collision course and ho uh, hopefully the new record too. Um, that they seem to understand what we're doing uh, a, a little bit um, better than a lot of the other places. And uh, it, it truly is, a, um, it's an honor to have uh, a fan base that is uh, accepting of, of your music the way that the French uh, fans are accepting of Linkin Park's music. So. Thank you very much. Thank you.